Hello, David here, and welcome to a tutorial on creating subprograms and calling robot routines, where you will learn how to create, call, and copy robot sequences. To begin, the terminology used to describe these methods can vary. Some may refer to a sequence, a routine, a program, or a robot subprogram. In this example, we will use the term sequence. We begin in the program tab, and in this simple layout, we have a palette, two boxes, and the visual components, generic articulated robot. And if we select the robot, the jog tool is highlighted. And on the left, in the program editor panel, we can see that some motion statements have already been created for the robot. And we have used descriptive names for the statements, such as approach and release, etc. The use of descriptive names is optional. It's just a method I sometimes use to assist in arranging the statements in a sequence. And if we reset and run the simulation, we can see the robot pick up the white box, place it on the palette, and return to its original position. Enabling frame types and robot positions allows you to check the positions of your motion statements. You'll notice that the robot grasps the box without using a tool. So checking the jog panel, the tool selection is null. However, the binary output statements used to grasp and release the box still function. We will instead use a suction cup gripper tool that we will add from the e-catalog in the home tab. And before we use the PNP tool to attach it to the robot, we can modify its component properties, creating a 3x3 configuration, making it a bit smaller. And returning to the program tab, we remember before we start to use the jog panel to select the tool center point or TCP of the suction cup gripper tool we are using. We have now recreated the sequence using the tool since the TCP is now in a different location. We grasp the box using a set binary output statement, and from its properties, the output port value is 1, and checking the output value will set it to true. And to release the box, using a similar statement, we uncheck the output value, which will set it to false. Then, when running the simulation, you will notice that the binary output statements don't function, because we need to map signals to actions in order to perform tool-specific actions. Visual Components robots usually have 16 built-in base and tool frames, including a set of predefined signal actions. And in most cases, signals 1 to 16 signal grasp and release actions. So first selecting the robot, we expand the actions configuration we load the component properties on the right, and under Signal Actions, set the output to 1, to match the output port we are using in the binary output statement. On true should be grasp, and on false should be release, and then under grasp, we should select our tool. And if we then reset and run the simulation again, the tool will grasp and release the box. If we examine the statements in the program editor on the left, where this pick and place motion occurs, you can see that we have added comments, indicated by the hash or pound sign, showing where the robot motion begins and where it ends. It begins with this first point-to-point -point or PTP motion statement, then touches and grasps the box, retracts and moves over the palette, places the box, releases it, and returns to its home position. So we can see that the list of statements between the two comments are for the white box, box 1. So we're going to place these motion statements into a new sequence for box 1, and then call that sequence. To multi-select the statements, holding shift, select the first and last motion statement between the comments. Then right-click and select cut which will both copy and remove them from the main sequence. Then from the sub program section of the program editor panel, click the green add sequence button. 
and to rename the sequence, double click on the text to select it all and type box 1. Then into this new box 1 sequence, we paste in the statements that we just cut. And then returning to the main sequence, we can see that only the comments and the PTP return statement that pushes the robot to its home position remain. And if we then reset the simulation and click play, nothing will happen until we replace the motion statements we removed. So then resetting the simulation again, select the box one comment, then use the call sequence statement option and from its statement properties panel on the right, select box one. And if we then reset and play the simulation, it will run the sequence like before. And now we want to create a similar sequence for the other box, which we will call box two. So we will reset the simulation again, and in the program editor on the left, select the box one sequence and use the copy sequence option. And the copy will automatically be called box two. Of course, we will now need to modify the copied statements since box two is in a different location in the 3D world. And you will notice that the copies do not retain the descriptive names we added, so we can replace those too. So with the jog tool selected, we'll select the linear motion statement P2 and grab the TCP and drag it into position over box two. Disabling frame types until we need them again might help to make the TCP a little easier to see. And if you're having trouble locating and selecting the TCP, using your mouse wheel, you can zoom in. And then holding your mouse right click and dragging, you can rotate the camera. We'll then use the red touch up control to update the position and then rename the statement as grasp. Of course, we'll also need to update the position of the PTP statement above linear grasp as well. But instead of dragging the TCP again, with linear grasp still selected, we'll move the robot up along the blue Z axis, then create a new PTP motion statement P2 and rename it as approach and drag it into position above linear grasp. And right click on the original PTP P1 used for box one and delete it. Then once the box has been grasped, using the binary output statement, we will need to lift it up. So selecting the PTP approach position we just created as a reference, we will click to create a linear motion statement P1, rename it as up, and drag it below the first binary output statement. If we then reset the simulation again and click through the motion statements we created in the box two sequence, we can see that PTP approach moves the robot into position above box two. Linear grasp then moves down to grab the box while linear up lifts it up. And with linear up selected, we will then add a halt statement before we run the simulation so that it stops at this position before proceeding to modify the remaining motion statements. So then we'll reset the simulation again and returning to the main sequence, select the call box one sequence from the list and use the call sequence statement control and from its statement properties panel on the right, select box two. And now when running the simulation, it will run the box one sequence and proceed to box two and stop at the halt statement. And then selecting the halt statement, we can zoom in and rotate the camera until we can see the corners of the box on the right side of the palette. If you need to make some additional adjustments to your camera view before you zoom and rotate, Holding both left and right click of your mouse and dragging allows you to pan the camera. We then select the align tool 
from the ribbon above and select the corner of the box to align with a corner of the palette. And with the halt statement still selected, we click to add a linear motion statement P1 and rename it as release. However, we don't want to reach this point using a linear motion. Instead, we can move close to this position using a PTP motion. So we'll move the robot up along the blue Z axis and create a new PTP motion statement P1 and rename it as transport and place it above linear release and then delete the halt statement. And with PTP transport selected, create a new linear motion statement P1 and rename it as up and drag it below the second binary output statement used to release the box. Then holding control, we can now multi-select and delete the linear P3 and P4 and P5 that remain below linear release. Then resetting the simulation and checking the newly created motion statements, the robot goes from PTP approach down to linear grasp and uses a binary output statement to grasp box 2. The robot then moves up using the linear up and moves towards the pallet using PTP transport and then goes down with linear release and uses a binary output statement to release box 2. And we can then delete the last remaining linear P6 statement copied over from box 1. And finally we can reset and play our simulation to see both box 1 and box 2 being grasped and placed on the palette. So in this tutorial we learned how to create call copy and paste robot motion sequences. And to show a practical example of why it's useful to have your robot statements organized, we'll first save our layout and then clear the layout by going to File and selecting Clear All. And then going to the Home tab from the eCatalog under Collections and Models by Type, select Layouts and add the Arc Welding and Crane Pillar Layout. And if we select the robot and then go to the Program tab and from the Program Editor, if we check the main sequence, we can see that it calls six different sequences. And if we examine any of these sequences, we can see how many robot motion statements they each contain. And if we did not apply some organization to the robot motion statements in our simulations, you can see how difficult it would be to debug the program and figure out what each element is actually doing. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.